So most of the, the teaching that my teachers have been trained on is modeling for the students, having the students copy what they've modeled. The problem with elementary school and just using that model is that the skills that they're practicing won't be implemented for 10 years. Um, so the students don't retain it. That's why uh, elementary school students don't remember their times tables. You know, fifth grade teachers say, well, they didn't teach them the times tables. Yes, they did. They just had no reason to remember them. We had a huge discrepancy between our um, socioeconomic students that are my middle class students, which is only about 20% of the school population, and the rest of the students um, in their academic growth. So um, talking with the teachers, their opinion came about that it was the experiences that the children had outside of school that made a difference on their academic growth. And so there wasn't anything we could do about it. Well, I don't take that very well. So um, I felt like we need to put experiences in the school to compensate for what they weren't able to get outside of, of the school. Um, so when I'm doing my work, sometimes I get tired or bored, but I realize that I have to finish my work before I can do 4-H. So I just work harder and then I get it done and then I know I can, work, I can do 4-H on Friday. Um, my students were having trouble with persistence, motivation, retention of information. So the experiential learning process actually helped with all of it. The, the teachers did think I was insane, um, but that's okay. <laughs> and the teachers are starting to take it in and interject it into their um, school curriculum. I think initially the teachers were pretty scared about doing this project. They looked at us as somebody who was coming in to really just add one more thing to their day. And so the idea was to actually to help make it easier for them. And we have found since moving forward that the majority of the teachers have found that it makes their day easier as well as really getting those kids to be engaged. Realizing that the, having the experiences anchoring the information we're teaching the students um, they're starting to retain information because now the students know why they need to know it. Um, they are beginning to understand that learning is fun um, and it's part of human growth is learning. You become a better person and that there are so many things out there in the world that they want to know how to do. Um, so there's an excitement about learning. School culture has taken a huge change. Um, people are happy to be here. Kids are laughing as they come in the door. So. Um, it's just made a huge difference in the school. So being involved in a school and being involved in um, a community, really, because I, I feel like that's what our principal's been trying to build, is a community that really engages students and opens their eyes. So experiential learning is based off giving the students, in 4-H, it's based off giving the students an experience first. So the students know why they're learning the information behind it. So um, say our cooking class. The kids go up and they try to cook a recipe and they can't because they don't know how to use the measuring tools. They don't know how to uh, follow the recipe instructions. So they have to stop, they have to learn those skills, and then the kids can make the recipes. So they know why they're learning what they're learning. By using 4-H in our classrooms, we're really seeing a lot more student engagement. Our 4-H curriculum is aligned to Common Core, so we're able to use that curriculum to really help the students in their everyday classrooms in a way that's very engaging. And so the idea behind the 4-H curriculum is really hands-on learning. Um, our motto is uh, to learn by doing. And so it's really about teaching these kids to get out there, take what they're learning in the classroom, and really apply it. It's projects they want to do. They want to build the toolbox. They want to watch the chickens hatch. They want to sew in the sewing lab. They want to weave. They want to um, make rockets. They want to do the Lego robots. It's like, they're like fun projects, but at the same time you're doing work. <laughs> and all the math and the science and the language arts and the writing that comes with it, they see a reason for. So there's less bulk on it and they remember it. So when we first started this, uh, I was, 23% uh, of my absences were chronic absences. And chronic absences are every day. You know, a child's coming in late every day, they're, they're gone for eight days in a row on a regular basis. 
uh, we went from 23% chronic absences to 7% chronic absences. Reading and math scores. Math scores, I was shocked um, by. We've, we've shown the most growth in math scores. Um, applying mathematics is extremely important. And so um, being able to apply their mathematics. So this school year, we've already had 10% of our students rise in, in hitting proficient. We've also had 10% drop in those students that are in red, which is two years below grade level. Um, and we're in January. So it's made a huge shift. Our goal is 20% shift of all of our students by the end of the school year into the next level. So we would like our red kids in the yellow, which is just a year behind, and our yellow kids to be in the green. Um, and it looks like we're gonna make it.